Hey guys, this is Arsenal Giants PS3, and welcome to episode 9 of our Super League. And now, first and foremost, I want to announce the winner of the competition. First off, it was the goal from Barichter against Hamburg, which put us 2 0 up, and the winner was. Taylor Hammond according to random.com whatever the hell I put them into so I will be contacting Taylor Hammond uh, Taylor Hammond's gamer tag and um, well today or tomorrow and s sending him the 5k the competition remains uh, and it's going to be in every series so watch out for it at the end of this video and we're going to start off here with a simulated game in the FA Cup against Boca Juniors um, again you know the FA Cup is not something I want to be competing in it's something which I think takes away a bit of your stamina especially in the lower leagues and um, obviously it's not a integral part of the infrastructure of this series but it's you know it's one of those games you have to play really in terms of simming it and uh, we actually take the lead here from Leandro and then get one through Sulemanji not too long later and I'm pretty sure that's how it ends too now I remember it being quite a quite a shocking win actually I mean Boca Juniors are a pretty decent side but somehow we come out on top and uh, yeah that pretty much concludes um, that pretty boring game and uh, the next game we go into now is against FC Seoul of Korea now they are fifth at the moment in the competition and their top scorer um, Esquadero I think he is the striker was actually the top scorer in the league with 15 goals at this point and uh, the other good player to look out for is Molina the Colombian and uh, I was expecting a strong attacking performance from them but a poor defensive one really I mean their defence isn't there's no real standout players there and we do take the lead um, Fisher, who I'm starting again after some good form plays a nice ball to Eriksen who finds the young and the keeper there is just not very very not very very I see very a lot in these episodes he's not very strong in his save and um it's one of those goals which you, you're very lucky to get, but you do have the kind of momentum and the power shots like that. The space was there for De Jong, and he is a clinical finisher. I mean, just look at this. I mean, he's not closing him down. It's loads of space, and it's quite a decent finish. But again, the keeper's just looking a bit dodgy. And we get a second very, very early on. Uh, it's Victor Fisher here. I mean, you guys have been asking me to use him, and my God, is this guy a beast on this game. He is an absolute legend when it comes to finishing I don't know what it is he just has some some players on FIFA just has have an ability just to finish I mean a lovely little dummy there but again the defense is just looking a little bit weak they should have got a tackle in there and um, his goal meant we go into the break 2-0 up against FCC well, I was very happy with that actually we're away from home where we struggled before in this series but we just managed to take our chances and score our goals and it took a little bit of a while to uh, get another chance dodgy there again from him Enoa here finds De Jong, lovely pass into Enoa, a great reflex save there and then beautiful following up work from De Jong to get his second goal of the game. Just a very, very clinical finish there. I really love the way he just kind of angles his body perfectly following in from the shot and just taps it in. A very striker's finish and um, it capped off really a pretty dominant performance. This FC Seoul team, the midfield weren't on the ball enough. Our midfield is probably the strongest part of our team. And uh, they just couldn't win it. So even though they had, you know, maybe the most clinical striker in the league, he didn't get any chances. And uh, the game really did end 3-0 with something like five shots to me and one shot to him. It was a it was a pretty dire game. And the scoreline does it a bit too much just, just justice. Uh, so we're going to look at Victor Fisher now. He's got a pretty damn good record there. An average rating of 7.7 .7 in his games. And he's already got gone up four levels. Leandro's got seven goals here in 23 games. And um, has gone up three levels. Sulemanji's gone up three levels, which is not too shabby, and he's scored a bucket load of goals. Seven as well in 22. Christian Eriksen's gone up two to become an 82, and Siem Diong um, has gone up two as well. And Noah's gone up one, and um, this guy's gone up three. So we're looking pretty damn good in terms of development, and that's one of the reasons I picked this series, but we have to win vital games, and this is a vital game. Werder Bremen were top of the league by the time we play this game and with a very strong team. Akpala up front is a strong and fast uh, German young striker. They've got Elia, who's a five-star skiller, and uh, Gabriel Selassie, the uh, Czech right-back, who did pretty well in the Euros, I think it was. And um, it's, a, it's a strong team, and you could see why they were top. They just had strength and depth, really. And uh, Kevin De Bruyne and Araltinovic on the bench as well. It was a very, very strong team, and one which I thought could give us trouble. But we start the game off a little bit brighter than them. A nice Rooney attempt there from Schoener. And um, we were just pulling pressure on them. Again, a wonderful tackle here. And Alderweil plays a beautiful ball into Dennis Barichter. I think it's Dennis. And Barichter here, he's very clinical finisher, but he just slams that over the top. Maybe that was me. Um, there weren't too many chances, and I really wanted to take that one by slamming it, not trying the uh, sometimes precarious finesse. Um, but it just didn't work. It just went flew over. And uh, we go in the break 0-0, which is frustrating. But 
you know, I mean, this team, they've struggled. Uh, this Acapella bloke really struggled to get any chances, but this was one of them. Lovely bit of work here. They were a good passing team. But again, the delivery here, just a little bit shit um, and cleared quite easily. They, they just didn't really make a hell of a lot of chances and it took until the 62nd minute here for us to get another chance ball over the top to Sulemanji and he just can't quite angle get his feet sorted out in time to have a shot they bring on Arautinovic here and um, my god is he a good player on this game so I was getting pretty nervy at this point and it's you know we're moving into the later stages of the game Eriksen here plays a lovely pass into Moisander I don't know what he's doing up there a lovely pass back and he just drags it wide I mean our highest rated player on the team gets our best chance and he just misses it. So we're going to make a substitution as well because we just were struggling to get clear cup opportunities and obviously missing them when we get the chance like that. So we bring on Victor Fischer who seems to score a hell of a lot of goals and John Guadetti who we haven't seen too much of this season. I'm just going to see if I can grab a goal. And um, here we get a chance here. Eriksen redeeming himself with some great midfield play here. Finds Sulemanji and I thought he's going to finish it. Bounce off the post. Comes out to that man Victor Fischer and I can tell you I celebrated like hell in real life as well on the game I it's something about these late goals in games in the big games as well on FIFA they've just captured perfectly I mean what a finish as well but it's just to score such a late goal in such an important game is a good feeling on any game and um yeah hats off to Victor Fisher that's quite a finish as well and uh you know go out and try get another one because this is when they start putting on the pressure the ball comes out to Sulemanji I tried to sweat it across to Ericsson, I think it is, it's just wide, comes out to Victor Fischer and it's well blocked. And that pretty much signalled the end of the game, it was a scrappy, scrappy affair. And it was always going to take one chance, and our wonder kid Victor Fischer really does take that chance. Just a wonderful result to get, and that put a second in the league going into the next game, and the final game of this episode against Kaiser Chiefs. Now you'll remember we lost to them at home. A very late goal from one of their strikers, I can't remember which one. And uh, that was a vitally frustrating game. So I went out here with a young but attacking team. Barbel making another entrance into the team. Fisher getting another start because he's been playing well. And Leandro as well. I'm still hesitant to use John Guadetti because he just hasn't impressed me when I've used him. And Leandro is not only a great finisher but a very good passer. So we going here and I was expecting a pretty tough game to be honest. These away games are always tough but the first chance we get falls to Ryan Bubble and what a finish. He just slams it into the top left hand side corner. He is a very very clinical striker um, or winger sorry in this game because he's quite an established player. He's one of these players which has graduated from Ajax and then gone back to Ajax. I think it was Ajax, not PSV, I'm not too sure. And obviously he had that stint at Liverpool and Hoffenheim so he's a pretty good player and um, he's going to have good finishing stats uh, so yeah 1-0 at the break I was pretty happy but they started to look dangerous and look at this for a tackle here from Moisander that is Bobby Cholton not Bobby Cholton Bobby Mahora against uh, Brazil if I've ever seen it and then they start the counter and Bubble plays a wonderful ball over the top to Fisher here and it's a half chance three men around him but he holds them off because he's got very good strength and uh, even better finishing and that's a three goals in three episodes I think that is which is absolutely absurd he is such a beast and I've, I haven't tried him on my team um, but I'm going to make it a mission to try him this year because he's just he has everything he has strength height finishing um, and even a bit of pace as well which is exactly what you want from a winger he could he could play striker as well they get a late goal here um, through Nagobo I think there is I can't quite see on my screen and it's a very nice finish actually uh, very nice dribbling on the wing from the winger plays in a beautiful ball and that's a pretty damn good finish actually um, but it was late on and I mean well, you just go ultra defensive after conceding this again Vermeer here looking a tiny bit dodgy but he's been decent in recent games so we're not going to criticise him too much so a 2-1 win against the opposition which has beaten us earlier in the season is uh, something I am going to you know I'm going to take that's pretty decent and um so towards the end of this episode now, uh, if you can pick your favourite goal from this episode, I would be appreciative. And just write it in the comment again with your gamer tag, same um, same layout as last week, and I will send you 5k Ultimate Team coins. Uh, yeah, and uh, that's, you know, I just like it because it, it feels like I'm giving something back for you guys for watching. Um, so in the league, we are second behind Sporting Lisbon. They will be our no next big challenge. A Al Hilal we're still doing very very well they've only lost five games which is pretty impressive uh, for you know Saudi opposition I wasn't expecting them to be strong and towards the bottom of the table we have uh, FK Austria, Melbourne Victory, Colorado Rapids Central Coast, Al Nasir and Shamrock Rovers so a tough time for Shamrock Rovers despite the fact they beat me um, in League 1 we have Roma at the top with Schalke and Spurs just behind Newcastle, Napoli, Sevilla doing pretty well as well quite sure about Udinese I thought they would be doing a bit better same goes for Fulham in 15th 
uh, our arch enemies Fire and Order in 18th doing shit, thank goodness. And uh, at the bottom we have Molde. I don't know if they've still got Solskjaer as their boss, but um, <laughs> he's not doing too much of a good job if he is. Liverpool have finally lost in league in the Championship. They've two games lost, but I mean they're still top by a pretty decent margin from like the rest of the pack there. Not too bad at all, you know, there's 10 points between them and 6th, and uh, it's pretty impressive. I mean, Suarez is a bit of a beast on this game, players like Sterling as well are very good, and uh, that's pretty impressive, and, um, you know, he's proving all those people that hate on Liverpool that they do deserve in the top tiers of European football. At the bottom we have Jumbuk uh, and Seattle Sounders, and in the Premier League, Juventus are top, which is pretty impressive, I guess. They have got a very strong team, as Chelsea found out last night. Uh, Bayern Munich are 2nd. Barcelona are third, Manchester United fourth, and Madrid fifth. As you can see, Arsenal have climbed up from 16th to 10th there um, after a couple of decent performances. Dortmund are doing pretty shockingly bad, as, as are Atletico Madrid. PSG are doing pretty decent, and Benfica are doing wonderfully well in eighth. Uh, Galatasaray, Galatasaray, Olympiacos, uh, Olympiacos, Olympic, Lyon, Sao Paulo, and Zenit. Zenit pretty shocking at the bottom there. That's a pretty weird table, but it should be interesting to see who comes out on top. But thanks guys for watching. Uh, don't troll the Liverpool fans too hard, and remember to write in the comment section below uh, which goal you thought was goal of the month. Thanks guys for watching, and I will see you guys later.